good afternoon, and welcome to today's episode of Speaking the Truth About Money with Martin Coward and Joy the Wise Woman. I am both Martin Coward and Joy the Wise Woman. Martin Coward is my human name, and Joy the Wise Woman is my spiritual name. And I'm so excited today to have as my guest, Jay Razuk. Razuk. Did I get it right, Jay? Jay Razuk. Jay Razuk. It's a Lebanese name, and I'm learning it, and I'm getting better at it. Jay Razuk. And Jay Razuk is an ally of the LGBT community. And I want to just stay for a second and talk about something new that's come up in, in my world at Financial Heart Space. After my recent uh, 12, uh, nine day uh, free workshop, and I realized that I needed to expand all of my programs and all of our broadcasts and the bigger reach to a broader audience to, to be more inclusive of all LGBTQ, of all of the queer community, and especially to all of our allies. Because everyone is welcome into that field beyond the mind of infinite love, infinite connection, creative, unconditional love. So it, it's part of my journey and part of my joy to bring a larger audience, an inclusive audience of all people who want to come into the kingdom of heaven. So I'm, I'm excited today as the first guest on my show to be an ally uh, into our into this into this conversation today because he's a he's a beautiful man with a huge heart and he has a really wonderful message for other heart centered leaders and change agents out there about how to lead in the world of legal space, a space that can be very confusing and upsetting for many people. And he's going to share some of his story about. One, I'm gonna, first thing I'm going to start out, Jay, is please tell us a little bit. I mean, I don't think you've always probably come into the world of thinking, being this loving lead, creator of, uh, and leading from the heart and seeing how to apply, apply law from a place of the heart. Because that's just not the way it's taught in our culture. No, it's not. So, so tell us a little bit about your story, how you went from being kind of a dog eat dog, the old court of corporate mentality, I win, you lose at all costs, to this loving uh, legal expert professional who has discovered that it's legal legal stuff legal decisions should be a triple win a win for you a win for me and a win for the world how did you how did you make that transformation in your life jay right well that's a wonderful question and and first i want to really thank you for just you know welcoming me into your group and and having me be here and i didn't realize that you know it was first ally you brought in that's very special so and I want to say hi to Alba Henry and everybody else who's joining us live right now. And um, we do want this to be interactive and I really love um, chatting with everybody. So thank you for being here. Those of you tuning in live, including you, Alba. So um, how did I get to where I am today? I mean, I, you know, went to law school, right? And I worked at this firm down in downtown San Diego that we represented shareholders of public companies. Like you, you, you name all the big brands, all the big companies, and we would read in the Wall Street Journal of these big scandals, you know, where billions of dollars get lost, or the government comes in, finds the company a ton of money, or they're producing a product and killing lots of people. And we would try to come in and try to fix the company and make sure these things wouldn't happen again. And I was always going up against, you know, the big CEOs and all their attorneys the biggest and best, most expensive attorneys on the planet. And, you know, it was great experience. Got to learn how the world worked. And I also got to see how the legal system worked. And it doesn't work very well. Basically, no matter what the outcome of a lawsuit is, I realized it was only the attorneys that won. And I didn't like that. I didn't, I just, it's, I realized it's just a huge waste of money. Even if, you know, there might be a good cause, the amount of money it takes to get there is horrible. And I really came into my heart that I wanted to make sure I kept people out of court and find a way to constructively resolve disputes to, to protect relationships. But, but it was more than that. That, was, it, it, that wasn't really my major breakthrough. The breakthrough came when I quit the job at the law firm and my wife and I went on a tour of America producing a documentary on mental health. And actually, we're still working on it. It's called Unbroken Minds. 
and we're interviewing experts and people with amazing stories of recovery of all sorts of different mental health conditions, you know, from bipolar to schizophrenia, depression, anxiety. Um, you know, again, we want to be really comprehensive. And a major takeaway I had was just how much we can just be so easily broken by the way people have treated us. And I was just even overcome by, uh, I don't know if guilt's the right word, but just realizing all the harsh words I've said in the past, all the harsh things I've done, how has that impacted people? And have I contributed to people's mental health state for better or for worse? And and just uh, you know, as we can say bad things and really affect people negatively, just the words of love are so powerful for healing. And that really um, just blew my blew me away too. I, I, multiple people we interviewed said the same thing that uh, studies have been done about you know does this therapy work better or that therapy, and the conclusion always was it wasn't the therapy that mattered. It was the quality of the relationship with the therapist. And I realized we too can all be a part of of the healing process by having having good relationships with people. So thank you. Juliet. Juliet. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. She's our recent scholarship window window. She is our recent scholarship winner in our new in our group coaching program. She's a oh. lovely woman uh, living in a refugee camp in Kenya. So very good. I hope uh, hope you get her out soon. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on that. <laughs> good. Thank you for tuning in. Uh -huh. So, so yeah, it was it was this work on a documentary that really just changed my eyes about how I want to be as a person, how I viewed God and spirituality, and 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 as I started reading even the Word, I realized the law is love. God's law is love. It, it all comes back to that. And so many people miss that. They yeah. miss the love and, and they focus on the legalism, focus on wrong things, miss the love. And if you look at our legal system, I began looking at that and I heard this great attorney talk about, he, he said, all the law boils down to just a handful of things. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't kill. And I'm going to go even further. I love that. I love this way this is going because even take the Ten Commandments and you say, okay, Let's just go there. And Jesus, who I am, who's my master, says to love your God with all your heart, with all your mind and all your soul and love your neighbor as yourself. On those two commandments hang all the laws. And I think that's what you're saying, because he's just exactly. saying to love, to love yourself, to love your God, to love everybody else. And if you do that, if you create that triple win in what you're looking for in the world, that outcome. Everything shifts from being about me, me, me to we, we, we. Exactly. And you realize the essence of sin is the me, me, me. Yes. It's the it's the opposite of love. Love is the other centeredness right. for the others. And anytime we are focused on, and I'm not saying it's wrong to engage in self-care, things like that, right? At times that's necessary. Oh, you, we but, want self-care. I mean, I think self-love is the key. I mean, we, yeah. that's not that, that's the opposite of narcissism. Narcissism I, is protecting yourself. Love is loving yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, and, and why do you love yourself? Why do you value yourself? Because there's someone who extremely values you. He gave everything he has and would give you more because of how much he loves you. Right. And and yes. so if you don't love yourself, you're you're almost not valuing that he values you. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I got it. This is this is you're speaking my language, brother. <laughs> Amen. We don't call it heart space for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and but the ramifications in, in the legal sense are huge to this because I I began to realize, you know, what is the meaning of life? We always joke about it as if it's something that we can never know, but I think we can know it, and it's this: yeah. it's to love and be loved. That's the whole point of, of life. God wants you to experience love and God wants you to give back love. That's what it was supposed to be from the beginning. If you, but what happened? You know, if you believe the Genesis story, 
Eve is pulled away. She's 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 tempted to doubt God. Love trusts, but she doubted God. And then she wanted what God had. She she was she believed the lie that God was holding back. God didn't want us to be like him. God, um, you can't trust God. And because so she you broke can't the trust relationship. The God and, because you can't trust yourself. Yeah, or or just yeah, I don't know how right. she got there, but she wanted, yeah, she said, I'm missing now. God's holding me back and um didn't trust God. And that's when she broke the commandment, ate the forbidden fruit. And and so that was the first act of not love by the human race. Right. And that was the sin. And and it comes back to the love. Right. And you can imagine how much it broke God's heart at that time. Yeah. Right. And, and yet God continued to love her and bring her back into the field of infinite love. And and that's what gets me is you, you look at the story, they're running away from God. God wasn't the one to say, get out of my sight. I don't want to see you again. He goes searching for them and calling out to them, right. trying to repair, restore the relationship. Exactly. I love that. That's exactly what he's doing. So let me, let's go over now and talk about how you've applied this newfound truth about yourself and this experience of what you've learned about really powerful, empathetic listening to people with emotional problems. And how did, how did, how did that translate into what you're doing today in the world of law? Give us a give us a, a bridge there to help us understand how this new awareness of the healing power of deep listening and empathy and compassion and truth. How does that get how did that get translated into your current practice? So as an attorney, I have to get people who come to me and when there's a dispute, there's a problem, you know, like they have a client, they're not paying and and uh, the client is making threats and I'm brought into this and I see, okay, we have a damaged relationship. What do we do? And the typical lawyer might come in and say, okay, let's throw all the bad stuff this person did at them, you know, and try to back them into a corner, you know, clobber them with words, you sound tough and aggressive. But I realize all that does, it's almost like the laws of physics, you know, for every reaction, there's going to be an equal and opposite reaction, mm -hmm. a counter reaction. And so you're going to push that other person to become more aggressive, to put back, to push back, to make counter accusations. And it's just going to drive the relationship apart. And I saw that happening again and again and again. And especially with the problematic where I noticed the client, let's say, would try to help the situation by writing a nasty letter and then <laughs> make my work 10 times harder. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, but whenever I would teach people to be, you know, more empathetic. Okay, let's, you know, I'm not saying you're wrong, but let's start, put ourselves in this person's shoes. What are they wanting? What are they feeling? How can we make them feel safe, appreciated? When we started thinking in those terms and start um, bringing to love, and I'll tell my clients, like, can you love that person? You know, can, do you genuinely, can you authentically love that person and get yourself think in those terms? Then we could get the client, let's say, on a call with this person. And of course, I'm always nervous whenever that call is happening, right? I might go an hour. I'm like, oh boy, I'm praying, hoping everything goes well. And then I love it when I always get that text, like everything went well. You know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll be going our separate ways, but all of us feel good about it. And that's what I love to hear. And then there's no lawsuit because, again, everybody feels loved and respected. That is the core expectation. We all deep down want to be loved. And when we don't feel loved, that's when we're like, something doesn't feel right. And that's when someone goes and talks to their lawyer. It is right. not, nobody knows the laws. Few people know how to read a contract. They don't know, oh, you broke the contract or you broke this law. I need to go get a lawyer to sue. No, they said something doesn't feel right. Because deep down, inherently, we know what love looks like and should be like at least to some degree. And when we don't feel that, we don't receive that, that's when we feel there's an injustice, we've been taken advantage of, something like that. And then we go to the lawyer and that's when bad things happen. So my goal is always make sure my clients love their employees, love their workers, love their clients. That's your first and foremost legal defense. Wow, I call I it the enlightened mindset. 
I love that because the way it sounds like to me is in, in, instead of coming to coming, sometimes people go to lawyers and lawyers just go in there and figure out how we're going to fan the flame. How are we going to make, how are we going to torch this thing up? Oh, great. We got a real good one here. And I got all this legal legalese in my head. I got all kinds of fuel. We can really blow this, this thing apart. We can, we can create a, we can, you think you had some drama. We can make it even more dramatic and cause more pain. Or there's another way. Maybe we don't get into the drama. Maybe we figure out how can we love the person and avoid the conflict. Exactly. Avoid the drama. Because it's just energy. It's just a story going on, right? It's just a story. And it's a matter of picking up, of, of taking a step back and looking at the facts that happen in the story and changing your story about it. Is it something that happened to you or something that happened for you? Mm. And maybe that's what's happening when you say, how can you love this person? How can you see that what's going actually is something that the universe is giving you as a gift that you can be grateful for? That's often what I do when I'm working with problem solving. It's like first, the three steps of problems. And I love to get your thoughts about this. I, I do a, 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 have a workbook on the three steps of solving pro problem solving. The first one is you have to own your role in the responsibility of the problem. You can't solve a problem. If you got a problem, you it's your problem and you created it somehow. You had a role in creating it. The second one is you got to really get clear about what the problem is. What are the facts? How does it make you feel? What are the judgments? Unpack the problem and dissect it into its various components to get clear about what really is the problem. And then the third, once you get clear about the problem and what caused the problem is typically our shadow's belief that says we're not good enough in some way. And we're trying to protect ourselves. I'm just going to jump a little further ahead here for you because we all have a shadow. We all have a shadow's mm -hmm. belief, which is the opposite of the truth. It's the negative, which tells us we're not good enough. We're not smart enough. And what happens with sin is all of a sudden someone gets tr that gets triggered. That person gets triggered in believing somebody did something to them. It tells them I'm not good enough. I feel shame. I feel bad. And it just it just kind of brought in that shadow's belief. So if you can get clear about, oh, wait a minute, this is just my shadow's belief trying to validate its lie that I'm not good enough. I can let this go and then I can surrender this whole story to love. I like that. Yeah. And 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 I think the lie continues where, yeah, you feel like, OK, these bad things have happened to me. I'm the victim. And and but then what happens is, OK, I'm now going to have to fight back. I am now going to have to do more wrong in return. Right. To, um, and, and this is where then, a, unfortunately, a vicious cycle continues. Yeah. And then that person will repeat it and, and it just spirals down. Whereas with love, the, the perspective is, OK, maybe I have been wronged. You know, but let me first, you know, objectively, as you said, I like that, you know, dissect it. OK, what did I do? What have I contributed to this? Let me own that part. I recognize maybe they have a part in it. But I still have a choice right now, which is I can break this cycle. And, and this is to me what's so powerful about the story of Jesus, right? Where he decides to sort of take on him all the punishment, all the abuse, being stripped naked, being, you know, verbally assaulted, mocked, whipped, and then ultimately killed. And he took it all to show this is what love does. Love takes, takes it. And he nails it to the cross um, and reveals the sin for what sin is. Right. I love that. And remember his last words from the cross in agony. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Exactly. And that's the thing. He realized we're so ignorant in the way we act. We are so bad. We don't even understand love. And we think even we might be doing what's right and it could be wrong. And so it's only when... We really show the true, genuine love again. That yeah, we could expose the person who's in the wrong, and but but love doesn't you know go and rub it in the face, right? So you see, see now I'm right. But if you show that empathy, you show that love, you show you you be the first one to extend the olive branch. You just change the energy right in the relationship, and now the person will want to very likely reciprocate back with it. Yeah, they move it out. Are you familiar with the term the drama triangle? Are you talking about cycle? Are you familiar with the drama triangle term? No. The drama, a lot, well, the drama triangle, the guy who, who came up with it. But it's, it's, it's what we're talking about. The drama triangle is there's 
There's the rescuer. It's the person. It's that rescuer. And we want to save the world to be important. It's a shadow behavior. Yeah. The, other, the other corner of the triangle is the victim. And the other corner of the triangle is the perpetrator. It's called the drama triangle. And you talked about cycle. And, and you know, we just we just we get caught up in that trap of I was I was I was victimized. I want to kill that person or or I need to be rescued uh, or I need to rescue someone. And we get pulled into different corners of that, depending on how we're feeling in the moment. And, and the way to break through it is exactly what you're saying. Instead of trying to jump into the drama is if we can hold that drama in a loving arms of the divine. Exactly. All of a sudden, everything begins to shift. And you went exactly where I was hoping to go, which, yeah, we don't have that love in us to do it. We don't have the strength of love to, to do it right. But if we, yeah, I mean, I try to center myself, in a sense, in the love of God to yeah. be able to have that love to withstand all the temptations that go in the directions of that uh, drama triangle. I love that because that's so true. Yeah. And, because, and, and we are that we, and, 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 and the demarcation between if, you, if we're talking about the various uh, ladders of human consciousness, if you will, there is a, what I call above the line and below the line there's below the line, which is just our true human, human animal instinct. And then we move up into the mind and the mind is split between the lower and the above. And the lower is fault is still falsehood. It's pride. It's all sorts of things that we feel victimized and all those things that make us feel bad. Like I love the word you said, it makes you feel, you know, this is something's making me feel bad mm -hmm. because negative energy makes you feel bad. It's called negative energy for a reason. It gives you those negative emotions. But if we have the courage to face those fear, what it is, it's a fear of the unknown, really. Yeah. We get caught up in a drama. We can't see beyond the we we think the future is going to be a reflection of where we are right now. It's just fear of the unknown. But if we can face those fears with courage, we'll move up into a higher level of consciousness that improves our power significantly. And where do we get that courage? And this is this is interesting. This is, there's this Bible verse that came up again and again during our documentary, and it's perfect love casts out fear. And it's amazing how many people I know found healing in that, realizing yes, yes, and we're talking the same language, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I love it. I love that. It's exactly right. And I and I I, and I just I, and and I, and I love the way you just bring in the truth of Scripture in a way to support love, because so often in the in the Judeo Christian story, it is people pull out Scripture to convey being right. And somebody else being wrong. It's yeah. a way of, of it's a way of basically of of making it the drama triangle, justifying the drug the, the drama triangle. So I love it mm. when I have a guest on here or I get to know someone who begins to use pulls from scripture to support the whole idea and the whole truth that we just love. And, and I'll, I'm, I'm going to tell you about the next. The, the, so there's three realms of human consciousness. There's the lower the lowest one is just our human body physical one. Then there's the human mind, which we just talked about being split, and we have the courage to face that fear with love, moves us up into a higher realm of consciousness. But to move into the to transcend the mind, to move into that field beyond the mind, it's something called acceptance and truth and trust. And when we can just accept everything exactly as it is, without any need to change it, and to love everything as it is, we're able to transcend the human mind and move into that field of infinite unconditional love. Would you say that is faith? You know, and you just talk about like, have the faith of a child, you know, yeah. God says it, it is so, you know, you just don't question. It, 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 it is absolutely it's faith because it's beyond the human mind cannot understand this. It is literally a field beyond the human mind. It's a spiritual field because we're spiritual. We we exist beyond the understanding of the human mind. That's the phrase, uh, a peace that surpasses all understanding. 
Mm, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's fascinating that you practice this in your legal world. So I want to, we got about five more minutes. I'd like you to just give some, some tips, some ideas that people can actually apply right away. If they find themselves trapped in the discomfort of the drama triangle, someone, they feel someone's done them wrong. And, and they, and they, and they, instead of what would, what would you suggest they do to get not go into the drama triangle, but resolve this from a place of love? Uh, first, number one, don't ever feel like you have to respond right away. Don't ever respond in the heat of a moment. Like if you, maybe you could write that email, write the letter, but don't send it, sleep on it. Uh, so that's mm. step number one. Number two is, yeah, really, I think some of these things we're talking about where, um, realize that you, you actually have a lot more power and control of the situation you might think you do. Um, maybe that other person doesn't realize that they might not have control of their emotions and, and you have an opportunity to really influence it and, and, and heal the relationship. So look at love as an opportunity. Love is a powerful force that you can wield to restore the relationship, value them, accomplish the beautiful goal you want to achieve. So channel that love and then trust it. Like I, I have, again, I have not seen it fail yet. I, I'm sure if you're reaching someone with a certain personality disorder, it won't work. You know, like a, a true narcissist, love's not going to work. But outside right. that context, when you're dealing with normal human beings, you're going to get amazing results. Right, right. Yeah, you're right. There are people who are just so, so self-centered and they, they've never experienced love. So if you try to approach them with love, they don't even know. They can't see it because they've got so much fear in their face. It's outside their field of, of potential, infinite potential. So they can't see it. All they've ever seen is, is, that, is that fear and that drama and that hurt. So you're right. But if you are able to open your heart and shine a light on the darkness, it sounds like what you're saying. Don't, don't, don't inflame the darkness by blaming the darkness for being dark. Instead, shine a light of love on that darkness and it will dissolve. And actually, that way you said there was a very good point, too, which um, that's something I really got from the documentary, too, is just you, you can if you just spend enough time getting to know somebody and understand them and hear them out. By the end, you will have you'll wonder, why are they not even more depressed? Why are they not even more anxious? Right. Like I when I've heard stories, of people with me major mental health issues how they've overcome. I'm, I'm just like, holy cow. I totally get it why you went through what you did. And we really need to just spend more time getting to. Yeah. It sounds like one of the, the other person's shoes. It's just deep listening, not deep listening to yourself, deep listening to your own divine loving self. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of what, what I talk about is being still and just listening to that still point within you of, of love, finding that place within us. And then opening that to others. Yeah. To, to shine that light of love. You become, it's all about energy, frequency, and vibration. So what we want to do is, from the terms of just that, is to take that negative energy and transform it with the light of a higher vibrating, loving energy mm -hmm. to dissolve the negative energy of shadow. Yeah. Because, yeah, you, you, can't, you can't deal with the other person's shadow. You can only deal with the shadow within you. Right, exactly. And and when you deal with the shadow within you, then you're going to put out, you're going to shine brightly and your light can shine on them. That's and, that, and that's how we resolve it from a place of love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. we've got about a, a minute more. Why don't you um, tell us a little bit about how people can find you, a little bit about what you do, how people can get in touch with you and why why someone might want to get in touch with you as a, 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 as a as a legal expert to help them with their business so i'm i'm really working with coaches consultants and online entrepreneurs I love helping, helping them grow and scale their business taking what i've learned from you know corporate america and then with the documentary really just help people can grow their business so i'm re reinventing contracts um so working on templates, things like that, will all the last paperwork you'll need to, again, take your business to seven, eight figures, like high quality templates. So 
Um, if you're interested, go to proscalelegal.com. Proscalelegal.com. That's where you could read more about it. Otherwise, I love to connect. I hang out on Facebook and LinkedIn, and feel free to uh, hit me up and mention that you saw me in Martin's group. Okay, and when we post the uh, the replay, we'll put the information in into the show notes so people can easily find you that way, Ray, uh, Jay. And so I just want to thank, th- really thank you. This was this has been very. I'm I'm glad that you're you're not the first ally I've had on my show, but you're the first one that I've had on my show with this intention mm-hmm. to open my my whole practice and my whole platform to a larger audience. So that's really what I'm talking about. I, I've had a lot of allies here on my show, but my okay. but but then I had to kind of at the end I had to say. I had to say, okay, some people can come here and some people can now say, no, what? Everybody, everybody's welcome into the into heart space. Gay, straight, mm-hmm. man, woman, if you want in, I want to bring you in here. So uh, that's when, and, and, and what a wonderful message you gave today about love in, in a world that there's not a lot of love. And I think that I imagine that from your perspective, it feels a lot of joy to bring that kind of light into something that can be so uncomfortable for people. So it is. I, I wish more, more people could hear it and thank you for the platform. And I love what you're doing, Martin, the, all the different things you're doing, including the work in Africa. And thank you, Juliet, for joining us. And also, Abba, thank you, Abba Henry. Yeah. Well, let me hold on one second. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to I'm going to make a couple of announcements here and close this out and we'll meet backstage for a second. Um, as I've said earlier, we've opened up our, our Facebook group to be more inclusive, to be completely inclusive. So if you are LGBTQ plus ally, that's what that plus means. If you wonder why, why do you see LGBTQ plus? Mm. It means it means the queer community plus allies like Jay who want to love and support us. So I have opened up our Facebook group. It now says uh, uh, financial heart space for LGBTQ plus thought leaders and change agents or business. I can't remember, but it does open to everyone. So if, if please join us. It's on Facebook group. Just come find there and join us. And we would love to have you in. If you're watching this, um, if you're watching the replay, please make comments. We'll come back and we'll chat with you. If you'd like to get to know me, you can certainly send, if you find me on Facebook as Martin Coward. Send me a direct message. Join our Facebook. I love to get to know people. I love to get to know you. So if you heard something today in this broadcast, that opened your heart and quieted your mind to something bigger going on in the world, because there is something bigger going on in the world right now. Eckhart Tolle calls it the flowering of human consciousness. It's taken us 14 billion years to get here. And you can feel it, can't you? Can't you feel the light in the air through the darkness? If you want to find out more about what we're doing, you want to join that movement, send me a direct message. Let's get together and let's talk about that. In the meantime, may love and prosperity prevail.